Greetings, everyone. Welcome to 2017. This is the Wednesday, January 11th, 2017 episode of Free Webinar Wednesdays. This is Eric Cook, and I'm with WSI Digital Marketing, where we work with businesses and organizations and helping them better understand and leverage the power of the Internet as a strategic business tool. You can learn more about me and all the fun stuff we get to do here at WSI online at www.poweredbywsi.com. My good friend and free webinar Wednesday partner, Mr. Jeff Simpkins, is unfortunately not available to join us for the first show of 2017. But in his absence, I will make mention of Jeff and his wonderful company, Community Bank Consulting, Inc. Jeff uh, works with banks and uh, I would say other businesses as well that are interested in maximizing their operational efficiencies and understanding business processes. And if you are interested in learning more about Jeff and all the cool stuff that he does, you can go over to communitybankconsulting.com. So I am flying solo. I don't know if I'm going to burn the entire hour, but I do have a few things that I wanted to share. Santa was uh, good to me this year, and you can see by the picture that is there on the splash screen for our promotion for today's session, uh, I did find one of the Google Daydream virtual reality devices uh, underneath my tree. Um, Actually, we had a little bit of a shipping snafu with the folks over at Verizon. Um, But uh, going into the end of 2016, I was talking about um, getting a couple of new Pixel phones, and this was kind of on the list, and Santa was listening, and so... I figured uh, talking about video um, and all different kinds of video because uh, I think 2016, I heard a lot of scuttlebutt about 16 was going to be the year of video. And if you Google search that phrase, you get a bunch of results. And if you Google 2016 or 2017 year of video, you'll get a bunch of results. So I think one thing is for sure. Uh, video is here to stay. It's not going anywhere and just keeps getting better and better thanks to these lovely little devices getting more and more powerful. So uh, for uh, those of you that maybe are joining Free Webinar Wednesdays for the first time, thank you. And those of you that are frequent flyers, you might recognize what I'm about to say. Uh, but cover a little housekeeping items for us or for everybody. Um, Free Webinar Wednesdays is recorded and made available here at freewebinarwednesdays.com. So if you'd like to go back and check out any of our past shows or share a show with a friend or a colleague, we certainly welcome you to do that. And then uh, we do like, and I guess I can say I do like, although if Jeff were here, he would say the same thing. Uh, We do like interaction from our live audience. And if you have a comment, question, thought, observation, uh, anything that you'd like to chime in, by all means, please feel free to use the chat function uh, for the con- in the control uh, panel area that's likely floating over on the right-hand side of your screen. Type it in there. I know uh, we had a little bit of technical before we got started and uh, had a little dialogue with one of our visitors. So feel free to use that, and uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, so with... The housekeeping out of the way, and with Jeff not here and me flying solo, uh, let's go ahead and we'll get started. So if you haven't heard me rave about my Pixel phone, um, I'll just kind of do uh, a brief little commercial for it. And what I think plays off of today's topic as it relates to video and imagery is um, an independent agency Uh, I'm not familiar with them, but apparently in the mobile device industry, there are those that go around and rate cameras and processor speeds and whatnot. Um, The Pixel actually received the highest rating for any device, even beyond um, the iPhone, for its camera quality. And so I've been doing a lot more photos, taking more video. I'll talk a little bit here about the Daydream and some of the apps that I'm starting to use now to engage and interact with, um, haven't rolled it out much from a client perspective, although we have uh, two customers now that are thinking about different ways that they can leverage 360 video, and we'll talk about uh, how that's going to roll out. Um, but I have been super, super happy with the Pixel phone 
Pure Google, um, it's getting security updates. I think I got one just the other day. So the, the phone's got a security update as recent as like, January 5th. Uh, if any of you listening to this are on an Android device and you go to your phone and take a look at what security patch you have installed, chances are it's probably not January 5th, 2017. So Google's rolling that out super fast. And for those of you that are iPhone fanatics, um, and I run on a Mac as well, so I love both operating systems. Um, the thing that I like about the Pixel is the fact that it's a pure Google experience, just like the iPhone is a pure Apple experience. And so there's no bloatware, there's no middleware, there's no, um, even though we bought it through Verizon, uh, there's no Verizon stuff that's installed on it that junks things up. It's just a pure experience. And so um, probably one of the, the the coolest things about the phone is the new Google Assistant. And um, Santa also brought one of the little Google Homes. Um, I don't think it has full capability to the extent that the uh, the Alexa from Amazon, which we have uh, a couple of Alexas roaming around the house as well. Um, so I think the Alexa device certainly has a couple of years head start. But Google has kind of the the search world kind of locked in and if you're using, um, you know, the G Suite products or Gmail, I think there is a lot of untapped potential that this Google Home device can bring to bear from an efficiencies perspective. And there's a lot of things that this device can't do yet um, that I think will only make sense when you start looking at your calendar, you start looking at email, you start looking at communication and all the other stuff that kind of rolls into your experience with Google. So the Google Home has been uh, a fun little device to kind of play around with and uh, ask it questions. It's a good little music. It's uh, got some decent speakers on it. Um, but uh, I think if you're looking to buy one device over the other, at this point, what I've seen is the Alexa probably is going to be a little bit more functional for you. Um, but if you're a geek like myself and you can afford it, then uh, go ahead and get two of them and kind of pit them against one another. The one that I wanted to chat about more specifically, and this kind of rolls into the rest of the stuff that I want to talk about today, is the Daydream. And this is the device. Um, watch the video. Check it out. Um, we actually, uh, with my brother's family, um, our nephew, we got him um, a little VR device that he could put his little iPhone 5 into, which was pretty cool. And this had not arrived yet. So that was kind of an interesting, holy smokes, this VR stuff is actually pretty interesting. Um, the VR experience with Daydream, and I think the, the kicker with this is you have a little controller. It almost takes me back to kind of like a Wii-like experience, which doesn't exist with any of the other, um, I guess, virtual reality items that I have seen. I, I don't know if the Samsung has it. I don't think that it does, but certainly the first-gen cardboard, there's a little magnetic button um, on some of the devices that you can use to interact and kind of, if, you know, you press a fire button or you need to, to, to send something, uh, gives you the ability. But this little device, if you've ever played with a Wii, um, really kind of makes it, a completely different experience. You've got a little touchpad item here um, that gives you the ability to kind of navigate around. You've got uh, an option to go backwards and then the home. And then the, uh, the Pixel device has moved to a USB type C charging cable and everything kind of moving forward from Google embraces that. So this charges with the, the type C charger uh, as well. So there's a ton of really cool content in here. There's some fun games um, from an arts and culture perspective. There's some museum and a lot of really neat educational things. Um, we don't have children, so uh, the dogs aren't really interested in to, uh, virtual reality. But uh, from a learning experience, it can really take you some pretty cool places that you wouldn't otherwise get an opportunity to go to. So um, I like what I'm seeing so far from this. And, and while not everybody's going to have one of these devices to give you kind of virtual reality in a three-dimensional world, 
there are people out there that are producing 360 video that if you can view it through one of these, rather than using your fingers to, tear, to drag around, you simply put this on and then your head moves. So you just got to be careful where you're standing, um, not to accidentally walk down the stairs or bump into a table or anything like that. Um, but the, the, the ability for people to now producing this 360 video, whether it's with you know, the Samsung camera or some of the other aftermarket cameras that you can go out and capture this kind of immersing photo slash video experience really kind of gives you a completely different way to interact with it. So as I kind of wrap up the whole kind of daydream VR stuff, um, you know, just wanted to pull up the Google Play environment for all the different um, free virtual reality uh, games and other sorts of things. Here's that arts and culture app that I was talking about. Um, some of the streaming services, for example, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, they also are providing a virtual reality environment. So when you fire up Netflix, um, if you're watching it on a regular phone or on your TV, obviously the movie just plays. And when you fire up Netflix VR, you still get access to all of the videos and movies and television shows and whatnot that are in the Netflix library. But now you're basically sitting in uh, it's almost like a, a lodge in Colorado with, uh, you know, big uh, hand-hewn beams and a window that you can look out over the horizon and a fireplace, and you're sitting on a couch, and you've got an end table in front of you, and there's a giant screen television that you're watching the actual video on. And so it just kind of gives you a completely different experience. Um, so this was one, uh, I can go ahead and disregard that. So anyway, it's a little live wallpaper that I downloaded to try that try that out. Um, so I think as, as more and more devices kind of support this, um, you can download um, a card the cardboard app, for example. You can download the Street View. Um, a lot of the phones now have the ability where you can do like a panorama shot, and that'll give you kind of a 360 or almost a 360 way of interacting. Um, I use the cardboard app, which kind of pulls up as a camera. And I was standing in the, uh, we were up north last week, I was standing right in the middle of our cottage, and I simply turned on the phone, turned on the app, pressed record, and much like if you were to do a panorama shot where you take it from the right and kind of gently kind of move it over to the left. Sometimes you'll see that there'll be a little arrow, so you try to keep it on horizon. Um, this actually allowed you to go in a complete 360, and then when I viewed that picture on the daydream, it was literally like I was standing right in the living room of our cottage. And you could look around, I could see the dog laying on the ground underneath the table, uh, the television was running, so it gave me the ability to capture that. And so, and they think about how that can be used from a business perspective. Uh, we're starting to do some work for a real estate agent up in northern Michigan, um, and she's doing live videos, uh, I believe, every Saturday morning. Um, we're also working with a museum in the Richmond, Virginia area that is also interested in doing some virtual tours and providing more of an immersive experience for their uh, patrons that maybe aren't able to actually come to the museum, but they want to be able to engage and kind of check some things out. Um, so I think there's going to be some really interesting ways that immersive video is going to start playing uh, more of an integral part with all types of different organizations moving forward. Um, I caught this, actually one of my colleagues within WSI actually kind of shared this with me today. Um, you know, normally when you do advertising, even on videos, for example, you go over to YouTube, you watch some videos, and you got some free roll stuff. What Facebook is trying to do as part of its video is put mid roll. And, and what mid roll means is the video content needs to be good enough where it keeps people engaged and they want to watch it for an extended period of time. And the longer you watch a video, the more engaging it is, the more you're going to pay attention to it. And if you can get somebody to watch your video, and, and pay attention, and then an advertisement as part of that process likely, I guess what, what Facebook is uh, predicting, 
is going to have a higher likelihood of that being looked at and paid to. Um, and so this, I thought, was a rather interesting article that talks about it, and, and they're going to share some of the ad revenue, so there's some monetization that's available there. So if you're publishing video and you want to monetize some of that, there could be some income opportunities for you. But when we think about live streaming video, and this is where we're going to shift from my little Google soapbox. <laughs> I'm done talking about Daydream. I'm done talking about the Pixel. Um, this is where Facebook Live kind of comes to play. And, and I think Facebook Live is really one of the kind of easier ways to get involved. It certainly, at this point, I believe, is the biggest reach because more people are on Facebook than any other network in the world. And it's made it super, super easy. I remember when this was kind of in beta and only superstars like The Rock and Lady Gaga had access to it. Um, but if you go to live.facebook.com, I think it redirects you to this Go Live. But this walks you through kind of the process if you've not done it yet. Um, and you can do a live video from either your personal account. So me as Eric Cook can do that, and I can have it distributed to my friends or as a business. So, for example, my WSI Facebook page, which doesn't get a whole lot of attention and love because most of everything that I do is under me as Eric Cook. But as a business page, you can go live as a business. And if you're going to do this for the business, it's important that you draw the distinction between the two of those because if you go live as you, you the business owner or the individual, depending on your privacy settings, depending on who you're friends with, you may not necessarily be reaching the right audience because sometimes the people that you're friends with aren't necessarily the ones that you're trying to sell products and services to or educate about your business. The other thing that sometimes is a challenge is um, there may be people that you would like to show that video to or to allow that video to be shared by others. And if your privacy settings are set where only your friends or friends of friends are able to see the content that you create, that could actually take your business video and restrict it and not give it access. If you do the live video as part of your business page, not only do you eliminate all of those restraints because 99 times out of 100, your business page is open to the general public unless for some reason you have an age restriction or a country restriction that you need to worry about. But this is going to give you the ability to go ahead and push that video out as the business. Now, it's still important that you kind of pre-promote that. It's still important that individuals who um, may be interested in knowing that you're going to be doing this uh, maybe get a notification. You could say, hey, we're going live Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and then make sure you as an individual share that because the organic reach of a Facebook post still hovers around 6 or 8%. So just because your business goes live and you're pushing a video doesn't necessarily mean that all of the fans that have clicked the like button on your page are going to see it. So do a little bit of pre-promotion around that. If you've got an email newsletter, that's a great way to distribute that. You can also cross-promote it in other networks, and we'll talk a little bit about Periscope and, and Twitter and even in Instagram and some of those other things. But if we kind of scroll down through, you can see Facebook Live, and it walks you through the different steps. And so this is a, a really great way of doing it. One of the other conversations that I've had with a client that um, does these is uh, you've got somebody that probably, if you're going to be doing it as a business, you may have somebody that's kind of running the camera for you. Um, you may want to do up some cue cards that remind you, if you're going to be the one that's going to be on camera, to mention a few things. Now, what would you want to mention? Well, it's a good idea to mention, you know, hey, if you're interested in making a comment, and it kind of talks a little bit about uh, that in some of these screens. If you're interested in making a comment or asking a question, type it in. And the person that's running the camera can keep an eye on that for you. And that individual can then, you know, you know, ask that question and say, hey, we've got a question from one of our audience members or one of the attendees. Maybe even mention them by name to give it some personality. Um, you want to make sure that you remind people how they can follow future videos. So somebody might catch this video as a replay and go, man, I really wish I would have been able to see that live. Let them know what's involved. You know, follow our page, turn on the notifications within the page settings. So when you click on the like button for a business page, you can go down and you can select see first, including video, and that way they'll get notification. Um, if you have other ways for people to engage with you, 
You may also want to cross promote and say, hey, you can also follow us on Twitter or be sure to visit our website and sign up for our email newsletter, any other things that you want to kind of promote there as well. It's a good idea to kind of mention that and encourage likes, encourage feedback. Um, you want to see some engagement there. So this has got a nice little list of frequently asked questions. Who can see your videos? How do you practice? So I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time, but this is a really good resource. There's another one that I found that kind of provides some tips. And so this is over at kind of Facebook media best practices as it relates to live. Now some of this is what I've already kind of chatted about. So this is that pre-roll where you're kind of telling people ahead of time. Um, you might want to make sure you're in a good signal area. So a couple other elements. Um, I typically travel with a mobile hotspot that provides me with unlimited bandwidth as opposed to using the actual data for my Verizon plan. So what I'll typically do if I go live is I'll make sure that my hotspot is turned on because when I did that a couple of times uh, and I didn't use my hotspot, uh, depending on how long your video goes, you can chew through some bandwidth pretty quickly because realize you're pushing video out live time. So if you don't have a real intensive data plan and you do this several times, you could maybe go over your data plan and incur some, some charges. Um, the other thing that's a good idea in addition to a strong connection is you may want to think about bringing an extra battery, having something that you can power. Um, data does consume your battery a little bit faster, so having an external battery with a little cord. Um, and then the last thing that I'll mention that I don't think is mentioned on here, if you're going to be outdoors and, um, you know, or I guess any place that is potentially going to have some background noise, they now make little directional microphones that you can basically just plug right into your, your audio jack, um, unless you're on an iPhone 7 and it doesn't have an audio jack, so you got to find a Bluetooth one. Um, but if you're using a phone that has an audio jack, you can use one of those directional microphones and you can plug that in. And they even provide options for like windscreens, so you can get like a fuzzy cover that goes over top of the mic, so the wind rustling. Um, but we've noticed when people go outdoors and they do kind of a on location, sometimes the background noise, the traffic, the wind, any sorts of other stuff can be distracting. And you really want people when they watch the video to be able to hear you well and to be able to focus on what it is that you're trying to you're trying to do. So um, when you get ready to do the video, you want to make sure you spend some time thinking about creating what sort of a description you're going to have. So here's an example from uh, POTUS here. Um, this is where you can kind of see they're mentioning the, the follow you and give notifications. So that's going to give you an opportunity to stay connected. Um, this kind of goes into the personalization component where you can mention the commenters by name. Um, the longer you stay on, the more individuals are going to actually uh, have an opportunity to see you. Facebook's going to push that information out and the longer you stay on, the better. Um, you know, have some fun, be creative, obviously, is a, is a good thing, so you can see some examples there. And then, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais, he was one of the ones that was also along with The Rock that uh, got kind of a, a pre-entry. So you can see some kind of examples uh, here as well. So there's a lot of different creative uses that you can use for this, and um, I'm curious if anybody's actually done a whole lot of uh, kind of the, the live streaming and uh, if you have what your response is, uh, you know, has been so far. So feel free to go ahead and I'll kind of eat my own dog food. Type it in the chat box and let me know. Um, the next platform uh, tied more so to Twitter than obviously to Facebook, but uh, Periscope. And I've got both apps and this is an article that I found over at the Traffic Generation Cafe, but a pretty cool little tutorial that uh, talks about kind of the different ways and, and certainly broadcasting with anything, the live video um, is where you're producing the content. But the, the really cool part about all of these live video services is you don't even have to be a broadcaster if you're not someone that wants to get on the screen watching these videos, finding people that are kicking out relevant, useful, helpful, informational content. I mean, those are all things that you can do to really kind of beef up your brand, to make sure that you're smarter, to make sure that you're learning things that your customers and prospects and those individuals that you'd like to do business more with um, can hear from you. 
And so, you know, that oftentimes is one of the most overlooked elements of social media in general um, is a lot of people think that, because uh, I do a lot of work in the banking space, um, that, you know, well, I, I can't be online, I can't tweet, I don't know what to say, nobody really cares about what we're talking about, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that may or may not be the case. I don't think it really is. I think everybody's got an interesting story. You just need to figure out the right way to convey it. But if nothing else, using social media and now live video as a way to keep in touch. And, you know, if you have clients that are using this, you definitely want to make sure that you sit in on when your clients are talking because it's good for you to pay attention to what your clients are saying. They may say something that you could work into conversation, um, congratulate them, maybe they're bragging about an award. We've always recommended that with regards to just following people on social media, you know, create a, a private list in Twitter that is a, a listing of all of your customers so that you can easily jump into that list and see what your customers are tweeting about. Well, now it's not just tweets, it's not just posts, it's not just updates, but now we've got to pay attention to when our customers maybe decide to go live and they're starting a video. Um, and so who knows, you might post a comment while they're doing a live video and they might give you a shout out when, and you know, if it's, if it's the bank, for example, um, and, you know, in the banking world, we certainly have privacy things that we need to be concerned about and it's a no-no. Um, if, uh, if I'm watching one of my customers' videos to say, hey, great video, thanks for being a customer, violates some privacy laws there, and that's uh, very similar to like in the healthcare industry with regards to HIPAA and other sorts of things. But if we're watching and, and I just post a comment and the customer comes back and says, hey, my banker's online, or hey, here's my, you know, now all of a sudden you've almost got an opportunity to work that into kind of a, an impromptu recommendation or a referral or at least a, a nice little mention. So it talks about that, you know, broadcast virtue, you know, watching others. Um, and so very similar to kind of what's going on, uh, of course, I would download it through the Apple uh, or the uh, the Android Play Market, but, you know, here's uh, here's some folks that uh, are doing some iTunes stuff. Um, if you haven't done it yet, it may be a good idea just to go out and snag it and to kind of claim your stake, make sure that you've got it um, so you can kind of run through some of these, but uh, creating a username, building a new password, all that stuff. Um, but here's some uh, some really cool kind of tidbits and little nuggets for you on uh, different ways that you can leverage Periscope. Um, I believe my first experience on Periscope, I was at, uh, uh, was at an airport, and my wife and I are both Disney fans, even though we don't have children who love Walt Disney World. And uh, somebody went live on Periscope from Disney Paris watching a stage show. So I tapped on it. This is about a year and a half, two years ago. But I tapped on it, and right directly from that individual's phone, I was watching the Disney show in Paris from the airport. Um, and at that point, the light bulb kind of went off, like, wow, this, this, is, this is pretty cool. This has got some potential. Um, the next item, and it, it's owned by, in case you don't know this, although I think it's pretty public now, most people realize this, but uh, Instagram has now got live video capabilities, and they've baked it into kind of their update process, which is very much like a Snapchat-y experience. Um, I know I should, and I try to go back every once in a while, but I have not really embraced Snapchat. I know, I know you're a digital marketer, and you should be using all these tools, um, but I've installed Snapchat probably three or four times and uninstalled it just because I just can't seem to get the hang of it. Maybe I don't have the right individuals uh, that I'm connected with or whatnot. But Instagram came out with a version very similar to Snapchat where you've got the ability to create a short-term story. Uh, it lives for 24 hours. It disappears when it's over with, very similar to all the different things you've heard about Snapchat. The video now has the ability to do that as well doesn't live on, so you really only have an opportunity to engage with people while they're actually there. But if Instagram is a, is a platform that you've done a lot in and you've got a good following, you might as well go ahead and give that a shot as well. And I would suspect as, as Facebook, you know, is its owner, the, uh, the changes and the updates that are going to be done kind of at the Facebook level, we're going to see a lot of trickle down. So 
If you haven't noticed it yet, uh, when you log into Instagram, you've got this little area at the top that you can see other people that have done that. And whether those are just kind of little loop stories or if they're actual live video that they've done, but this kind of gives you an idea of any of the people that you followed that uh, might be doing some stuff. But this also uh, article from the Social Media Examiner does a really good job of explaining the process of you know, going in and, and doing a live. You basically, you've got your little headshot here. This is going to be your picture with a little blue uh, plus symbol. So you're going to go ahead and click on that. That's how you engage with this whole story area. If you want to just post a picture, you can see you're still going to do that very same where you're just going to click the plus and it's going to give you the ability to select a photo or something from your, from your image gallery. But this is going to give you the ability to kind of push that information out. You can see it supports comments and engagement and interaction. So a lot of the things that are mentioned in this tips for using Facebook Live, tell people ahead of time, ask for feedback, tell them how you're going to go about, you know, finding more videos down the road are still going to be relevant regardless of what platform you're on. Um, so spend some time and I guess explore, I would recommend exploring those three platforms. Um, take a look at where your customers or your hot prospects or the folks that you would like to do more business with in 2017. Find out where they're hanging out and what they're doing. And maybe they're using, maybe they're playing around with video, maybe they're not yet. And this might be a little premature. Or it might give you an opportunity to be more of a, of a leader in the market as opposed to somebody that's just kind of following. And you can maybe start a following um, in the uh, in the video, but this is a really good little tutorial that just kind of walks through the whole concept of what it takes to to do a, a an Instagram live video. And then I can't not uh, talk about uh, video and not mention YouTube. Um, I've not seen it yet come to mobile devices, but you have the ability to do live events directly through the desktop application or the, the web-based application for YouTube. So I've logged into my account here and you can go and you'll see that there's an option for live streaming and you can create an event. Um, you can stream it directly and click on stream now. It gives you the ability to, to do that. Um, you can click on and I've pulled up kind of a virtual reality channel here where you can go in and you can see you know all the different 360 videos just kind of doing the search. Um, Casey Neistat is a, a pretty uh, well-known vlogger, video vlogger, and if I go to his videos, one of the things that he did over Christmas is he actually used one of the Samsung Gear 360 cameras, and he had a custom drone created for him that had enough power to actually lift him up off of the ground. Um, they went, uh, I believe they were in the Netherlands somewhere, Finland, um, and he did some drone boarding, which is what he called it. And so you can watch this video, and while the video is playing, you can actually drag it with your mouse, or if you're watching it on your phone, you can kind of move it with your finger, and if you're lucky enough to have a Daydream View or one of the VR devices, you can fire this video up and you can watch it, and then you're essentially just following the video. So while he's snowboarding behind this drone, if you turn and you look at him, you can see him snowboarding. If you turn the other direction and look up, you can see the drone up in the air pulling him. Um, this is the type of video that I think we're going to see more of. And I mentioned the museum, for example. Um, you know, imagine if you were interested in, uh, in one of their exhibits, but you know, uh, you don't have the ability to travel to Virginia, or maybe it's uh, maybe the Louvre in Paris is is going to push something out that will provide you the ability where you can go in and see some special exhibits. Um, I don't think it's going to impact their revenue. I mean, somebody isn't going to choose to do just a 360 video tour of a museum and not go there if they really want to, but it could be used as a lure piece where somebody could say, well, I wonder if that exhibit's really anything that I should, you know, plan a trip around or visit while we're in the area. They can do that and then, you know, give you the ability to kind of share that information out and give someone an experience that they can, you know, be a part of and immerse themselves in, whether they've got one of the VR viewers uh, or not. So check out the drone boarding video from Casey. That's kind of cool. Um, but there's certainly a lot of 
360 degree video that's out there. Um, you know, one of the other platforms, I don't think it comes really as any surprise, but you know, the folks over at Red Bull, um, a little bit more extreme sport orientated uh, than maybe what some of you are comfortable doing on your own, but motorcycles, mountain bikes, um, kiteboarding, you know, um, surfing, uh, just all sorts of really cool things that uh, that they're doing with all the Red Bull athletes and whatnot. So, um, so that, uh, like I said, this is going to be a relatively short session. I just wanted to kind of toss out some of the different areas that I think you should be paying attention to as it relates to live video and 360. Um, so if you've not kind of messed around with a live video on Facebook or you don't have a Periscope account, maybe you're not even on Twitter. Um, you know, I think those are areas that if you're kind of wanting to follow and see what's going to happen, a lot of brands are going to start pumping information out. I know in the uh, VR apps area, um, there are a lot of the news channels that are starting to push information out. So you can see Fox Sports, Wall Street Journal, um, CNN, you know, not only can you put the virtual reality viewer on and become part of it, but it gives you the ability to immerse yourself actually in the story. So the photojournalists are taking 360 view photos of these different places that they're covering. So you can read the story, but now you can feel like you're almost in it. Um, and, you know, the daydream itself, I think it's, what, 80 bucks? It's definitely not uh, a break the bank type thing. So um, it's, a, it's a reasonably priced device and, uh, you know, just kind of one of those cool things that if you can afford it and if you're, you know, not motion sensitive and get sick when you go on a roller coaster, because that's the other thing you want to be really careful of, um, but uh, just a, a completely new and different way to experience the world around us. So. Um, so with that, I'm just going to quickly do an eyeball over here to see if there's any comments or questions or thoughts from the audience, and I don't see that there are. So if you have something that you would like to toss in, feel free to go ahead. But otherwise, I think we'll go ahead and draw a close to the first episode of Free Webinar Wednesdays for 2017. Um, so thanks for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful year ahead of you. I know we're excited about a lot of the things going on here at WSI and in our personal world. Um, so uh, I think 16 was good, but 17's uh, got even cooler stuff ahead for us. And hopefully that's the case for you. So with that, I think we'll draw the show to an end. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to hop back out to freewebinarwednesdays.com to check this video out and any of the other ones that we've posted in the past. And until then, we'll see you online. Take care and have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.